Hi, everyone, and welcome to Absolution Water. My name is Julio Reyes, and this is going to be the first in a series of three online operator math tutorial videos. Some of them are, are going to be presented to you with a whiteboard, and the others are going to be presented to you with an electronic tablet, like today's video. The tablet is just to give you a feeling as to what our live online operator math workshops are going to look like. It's actually math and the, and the practical, but the math specifically, we're going to utilize the uh, electronic tablet. So if you like what you see and what you learn from those vi from those videos, then make your way on over to www.absolutionwater.com and see when our next scheduled operator workshop is. With that, let's get started. Uh, today I wanted to talk about conversions. Uh, as an operator coming up the ranks and taking different uh, operator uh, certification exams, uh, and even now, uh, as an instructor, I have really seen uh, the need for more operators to understand how to properly convert. I've seen too many, not all of them, but I've seen really just too many um, instructors really underemphasize the importance of conversions. And I'll tell you why they're very important. Because um, you, might you might recognize in a math problem that you need to utilize a particular type of formula, but the question will most likely be given, uh, giving you the uh, units of measure in a, in a different unit of measure. And so therefore, you need to convert. For example, you could be given gallons per minute in the question, but you need to utilize the pound formula, which requires the unit of measure to be in MGD, millions of gallons per day. And if you don't know how to make that conversion, or if you use that GPM, you're going to get it wrong. And so therefore, conversions are very important. You're going to probably have to convert in the majority of your math problems um, to put that, to plug it into the formula. So whenever I do my on-site uh, workshops, I always start with conversions. And I typically call them boot camps because I like to do a lot of them uh, in order to understand. It's, the, the process is not difficult. It just requires being familiar with them. That's all. It's just a sequence of steps that you need to go through. And once you have memorized those sequence of steps, then you could convert any unit of measure to any other unit of measure. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's try to convert 300 GPM, which is gallons per minute, to CFS, which is cubic feet per second. I'd like to start by just saying that I don't even like the 300 GPM or even the CFS in terms of uh, solving a math problem. I like to try to turn them into fractions uh, because you really can't, the way those are expressed there, the way I have them underlined, you really cannot use those in a math problem. So we will always start our conversions by turning the question into a fraction. And here's how we do that. Whenever you read the expression and you hear the word per, so for example, in 300 GPM gallons per minute, that per is going to be your fraction bar. So I'm going to rewrite 300 here. And then I'm going to say gallons. We're going to go with it. And I hear that word per. That's going to be my fraction bar. And then minutes go on the bottom. That's how we're always going to start. And even if you take a look at CFS, it's not, there's not even uniformity between GPM and CFS. Uh, it should be like CFPS. And so it's actually implied in there. All the more reason why I don't like to express them like that when I, when I do math with them. And so we have started by converting this 300 gallon per minute into a fraction, 300 gallons over a minute. And at this point in time, I've always had operators say, Julio, I, I, I never know when to uh, multiply or divide by 60, because we all know that there are 60 seconds in a minute. That's a sloppy minute. Uh, so the, the question is, do we multiply or divide by that 60? And so going forward, we're always going to multiply by a fraction. And the question is, do those 60 seconds go on the top, or do they go on to the bottom? And the answer is, after we set up uh, multiplying by a fraction, the answer is, well, whatever unit of measure that you're trying to eliminate, in this instance, it's minutes. 
and the minute uh, on the bottom, which is also known as the denominator, you need to put them on the opposite level. So because minutes in their original expression of 300 gallons over a minute, because minutes are on the bottom, we're going to get our minutes and we're going to put them on the top. One minute. And those 60 seconds will go on the bottom. And what happens here is this minute is canceled with this minute because we're trying to eliminate them. If you put minutes on the bottom with it, you've just said minute squared. So you always have to put it in the opposite level. And so with that, let's go ahead and simplify that 300 to the left. It's going to be divided by 60 seconds, which is to the bottom right. And that simplifies to 5. And then we are left with these gallons here. They didn't uh, cancel out, so we have to keep them with us. And the seconds. So now we have gone from minutes to seconds, but we need to keep on going. We need to turn those gallons into cubic feet. So I'm going to just rewrite this for the sake of having more room. And it's five gallons over second. And again, we're going to start. Fortunately, in this case, we already have our five gallons over seconds. We already have a fraction, so let's go with that. And step two is going to be we're going to multiply by a fraction. And we, as operators, we should all memorize that there are seven. 0.48 gallons, sorry about that, 4, per cubic foot. So that 7.48 gallons needs to go in the top or the bottom, and as well as that, those cubic feet, are they going to go in the top or the bottom? And so the units of measure that we're trying to eliminate are those gallons that are connected to that five gallon. And so because they're on the top, because they're in the numerator, we're going to get those 7.48 gallons and we're going to put them in the opposite level. 7.48 gallons. And those cubic feet must go into the empty space there, the numerator. Okay, let's simplify. 5 divided by 7.48 is actually 0 0.668, but I'm just going to round it. And we'll call it 0 0.67. Now let's deal with the units of measure. Well, gallons have to cancel. And I'm left with cubic feet on the top. and seconds on the bottom. So this is our rational expression, 0 0.67 cubic feet over seconds, or we can rewrite it as 0 0.67 cfs. Let's do another one. What if you're given a whole number? How do you turn a whole number into fractions? Well, let's say we have two gallons. And we want to convert those two gallons into cubic feet. Well, uh, the first thing we need to do is turn this expression into a fraction. Well, wait a minute. We have a whole number. How do we turn that whole number into a fraction? You should know that all whole numbers are actually rational expressions, which means you can express them as a fraction. And the way that you do that is all you need to do is write it over 1. Any number, 10, 20, 30, 40, a million, over 1, it's still that same number. Get any number with your calculator, and then if you divide it by 1 and hit equal, what number did you just get? You got that same number. And so therefore, knowing that rule, that any whole number is still can be expressed as a rational expression, this is how you're going to set up your conversion with whole numbers. 
and this looks very familiar. Uh, remember, we started by converting those that the, the previous 300 gallons per minute into a fraction, into a rational expression, and then we multiply by the fraction. So we converted this two gallons into a fraction, and now step two is let's multiply by the fraction. And off to the side over here, let's recall that there are 7.48 gallons for every cubic foot. I bet you thought I was going to write it over here with two T's and two. Okay, so the question is, where do those 7.48 gallons go? Do they go into the top or the bottom? Or where do the cubic feet go? Do they go in the top or, or, or the bottom? And the answer is, well, we're trying to eliminate those two gallons. We're trying to eliminate that gallon. So therefore, it needs to go in the opposite level. So we're going to put 7.48 gallons on the bottom. And that means we're left with cubic feet on the top. Well, these gallons cancel very nicely. And if I get my calculator and I divide by, uh, if I divide 2 divided by 7.48, I'm left with 0 0.2, uh, let's just call it 7. I'm just rounding it. Now, what about my units of measure? We've done the math part. Now let's do the units of measure. Well, again, this gallon that was on the top canceled with the other gallon that was on the bottom. So I'm left with this unit of measure, which is cubic feet on the top. And that's it. I have 0 0.27 cubic feet over 1, or we could just express it as 0 0.27 cubic feet. I hope you found that helpful. For more videos like this and other resources, visit our website at www.absolutionwater.com, the answer for water professionals.